So welcoming Katie O'Connell from Dragonfly Yoga Barn. Give us some ideas on reducing stress. Thanks, Katie. Sure. Thank you so much for having me. This is just really a joy to be here with you all. And uh, the topic of tonight's conversation and hopefully some of the offerings I have for you are really what I'm getting a lot of um, questions about in my regular daily practice with my private clients as I'm teaching yoga on Zoom to people from California to England um, and everywhere in between, everybody wants to know, what do I do about stress? And we all know, I mean, especially after the last year with the beginning of this pandemic to where we are right now, that across the spectrum, people are experiencing stress in ways that maybe they haven't, you know, had a, this amount of prolonged stress. Um, we always have stress in our lives. We have stress because we drive in traffic. We have stress because we have relationships with people. We have stress because we may have broken a bone and then, you know, our, our bodies end up in a, a shape that. Um, is responding to the stress that we had during that accident or that injury. So it's not like stress is going to disappear. And we can say, good riddance, done with that, never have to worry about stress again. We always have to um, think about what we can do to support ourselves in times of stress. And, you know, right now, I think it is, it's such an important conversation because the kind of stress that we're experiencing is affecting body, mind, and spirit. We're worried about our physical health and, you know, with COVID out there in the world, a lot of us are afraid of doing deep breathing. Um, we're not really sure, like, what we should be doing. How, how, how deep do I breathe? Will that impact my, you know, the potential for me to, you know, even breathe in the particles that this um, virus has? So I've had a lot of questions around that. And then, of course, on the other side of things is just how do I support myself? How do I build my immune system for whatever stress comes, regardless of whether it's a virus or anything else that happens in life? So I hope tonight what I'll be able to do is just share a few things with you. And I, I guess I would call these, they're kind of like the nuts and bolts of yoga, right? Yoga is not just about postures. And a lot of people are afraid to come to a yoga practice because they're like, oh, I'm not flexible enough. You know, oh, I can't touch my toes. I, I can't do yoga. And really, that's exactly why we want people to come to a yoga practice is so that we can develop flexibility, we can gain strength, we can boost our immune system, and we know how to offload stress when we have it in a variety of different ways. And so some of the ways that are um, really, I think, really easy and important um, are breathing practices, and we call those pranayams. And then there are a handful of poses that I'm gonna try and share with you tonight as well. So um, hopefully this works. I'm gonna share my screen with you and give you um, the first of three, I hope, slides that I'll be able to share with you tonight. So let's see if we can get this to come on the screen. And you guys can just give me a thumbs up if you can see that so I know it's there. Um, Awesome. All right. So this, the, the breathing practices that there are so many pranayam, so many breathing practices, and some of them elevate your heart rate and they make you feel more energized and other ones are really calming and they bring you right down. There are breathing practices to clear out your mind. There are breathing practices that are meant to clear out your lungs. There are breath practices that are meant to be on a cellular level. So it's really, really, um, an awesome, huge array of breaths that you can choose from when you're trying to have a certain outcome, you know, for, for doing that breath. And so the ones I've picked for tonight are really about calming us down and helping us to soothe the nervous system out. And really to get out of fight or flight, we have to calm down the nervous system and get into something that we call the parasympathetic nervous system. I don't know if you guys know about the, P the parasympathetic nervous system. Um, PSNS is often what it's referred to in short. So this breath, sama vritti, means balanced breathing. The word sama actually means equal or same. So it's a super easy breath to learn and we can practice it right now together. And um, all you need to do, you, you don't need any special props except to sit comfortably. And that could be on the floor like I am, or it might be in a desk chair or on a couch. It could even be laying down on a yoga mat or in your bed. So you could literally be in just about any pose 
um, for this particular breath. You could put your hands on your body if you want to get connected to the physiology and actually feel what this breath is doing, or your hands can rest in your lap. Okay, so let's just start by sitting in a comfortable position. And you can all close your eyes because you won't need your eyes to do this. And later on, the directions that are here, I'll share with Amy and, and you can um, have them at a later time. So just close your eyes and begin to notice your natural breath. You might notice that it's quick or that it's, you know, moving slowly. It might feel really spacious or it could feel kind of shallow. So just notice your natural breath. You don't have to change anything. You're just breathing in and out and kind of taking stock of what this natural breath feels like. So take maybe three or so more breaths in and out. And if your eyes are closed, it's kind of like watching with your inner eye, how the breath is moving. Notice where there's some undulation as the breath comes in. Maybe you feel that it moves the chest or the belly, or maybe there's a place that feels kind of tight and not really moving very much. So here's where we're going to start this practice. I'll explain we're going to breathe in for a count of four and breathe out for a count of four. Now, if that timing seems like too long for you, you could breathe into a count of three and breathe out for a count of three, or you could make it longer, but let's just try four together. So take a cleansing breath in and out. You can breathe out through parted lips if it feels good just to let off some steam. And then we'll go ahead and breathe in together for a count of one, two, three, four, and just feel the fullness of your breath for a moment. And then we'll breathe out for a count of one, two, three, four. And when your body feels empty, just let that emptiness be there for a moment. And then again, breathe in for one, two, three, four. Feel the fullness of your breath. And then exhale for one, two, three, four. Let's do one more round. We'll breathe in for one, two, three, four. Let that breath be full for a moment and then breathe out for one, two, three, four and feel the bottom of the breath. And if you want to continue, you can go ahead and continue counting and breathing and open your eyes and I'll explain a little bit. But there's no reason why you couldn't do this breath at your desk or even in a conversation with someone if you were listening. Just to, if let's say the conversation was a little bit tense and it was making you feel uncomfortable, you could actually use Samavriti. If you were, you know, in traffic, you could use Samavriti. You don't have to have your eyes closed. I often use this at the beginning of yoga practice, but it literally can happen anywhere, okay? So um, I'm not sure how that made you all feel, and you're certainly welcome to ask questions throughout this or in a moment when we get to um, an opportunity to talk about some of these things. Um, but you could keep that pattern and you could expand it. Maybe you make it six counts in if it really feels good to just lengthen the breath and fill the body. And it could also feel really, really good to exhale. There are some variations to this breath that are super easy. One is to keep the four counts in, but to double the exhalation. Now, if you're able to do that, or even add a couple of extra counts on in exhalation, then you're really kind of taking good care of the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is what gets us into that parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest. So it takes us out of fight or flight nervous system and into rest and digest. And that's really what helps us to slough off anxiety, tension, stress, you name it, right? And it's those things, the stress, the tension, the anxiety, those things actually attack your immune system. They reduce your ability to respond with a really healthy immune system. So I'm going to stop the share on this for a moment. You can see right there over the benefits of the practice creates awareness in the present moment, stills your busy mind helps release muscular tension and improve focus, 
soothe the vagus nerve and it turns on the PSNS so that we can rest and digest and we all need a little more of that. So if anyone has a question about that, I'm happy to take a question about that particular breath or why it's good or I could start to share a couple of yoga poses and you could use this breath while you're doing the yoga postures. So you could actually kind of take it and put it to a little bit of practice. How does that sound? Good. All right. So hang on one second. Let me see if I can share another quick little slide with you that's really kind of cool and it, it's going to break a few poses down for us into some categories that we'll be able to use just for a really quick demo here. So again, I'm going to share my screen so you can just kind of see this on the sidelines. And so the poses that we're going to practice right now are child's pose which is really easy and there are lots of variations so that it serves every body regardless. You may not look like that little girl there <laughs> in the blue outfit, you know, um, folded right over. You might be like, well, what about my knees, you know, or what about my shoulders, or I can't put my head on the floor. Don't worry about any of that. There are lots of ways to do this. Twists are also really great poses and I'll give you at least one of those tonight. And then chest openers or heart openers are also really great ways to touch base with that PSNS and to help us to let go of stress, tension, um, and also really to get us into the capacity of our lungs. So if we can get in there, kind of sweep out the dust bunnies, so to speak, in your lungs, then we're keeping those tissues toned. You're allowing a, a fuller breath, an easier breath, and, um, and all of those things are gonna help us with the immune system. So if you, you can just simply watch if you want to, or you can actually join me for these and see how maybe this feels in your body. So the first one is child's pose. And I'm just gonna tip my screen down a teeny little bit here so you can see. For child's pose, all I'm going to do is simply bring myself onto my hands and knees and sit my hips back to my heels and let my forehead come to the floor. Or you could pull in a bolster or a block or something higher if you need it. You could use your own hands and simply come down and have a little rest. If your knees hurt and it's tough for you to bring your hips back to your heels, you could put a bolster or a blanket in between your knees and keep your hips kind of high and not do that squishy thing with your knees. So you've got a little more space back there. And then you can also build up whatever props you want under your head, whether it's your hands or a blanket or a block so just pause there for a moment and take a few breaths. And if you want to use that Samariti, maybe just try two or three rounds where you're breathing in for four counts and breathing out for four counts. So I'll tell you, um, there's some really great research out there from a number of different sites that talk about the benefit of child's pose. So not only does it slow down the heart rate and it calms the mind, but they say if you can be in child's pose and take just 10 breaths here, and for most people that's somewhere between a minute and maybe two minutes, depending on the pace of your breath, that you can calm your body down so much. Um, this is a wonderful pose to, to bring into elementary schools and get kids to do if they're really kind of, you know, nervous, a lot of anxiety, some tension, you know, so whether it's children or adolescents or adults, we can all benefit from a pose that's just super easy like this one, child's pose. So if you want, you can go ahead and lift up out of that. And what I'll have you do is if you have a comfortable place down on the ground, so Peggy, I can see you on your, your mat. I can see people down on the floor. It doesn't have to be on a yoga mat. I've just got a rug underneath me right now. But you can come onto your back and we'll do a little spinal twist. Spinal twisting is great for a number of reasons. It's great for your digestive system. It's really good for your lungs. It helps you to, again, get rid of stagnant energy. So the, you know, those dust bunnies that I was talking about in your lungs, that's kind of, we, we get that in our digestive tract too. So we, we don't just want to eat food and, and, you know, take the nutrients of it and then digest and eliminate that waste. You know, we have waste that happens in other parts of our body, in our joints, in our tissues, and some of that can happen in our lungs. So things like mucus, that stuff that gets stuck in there, 
there are ways that we can help our, our lungs to get rid of that congestion and to relieve that pressure. So on your back, you might be like, okay, this is I'm staying in this position for the rest of this talk tonight, and you're welcome to if you want. But simply pulling your knees gently into your chest, and you can hold your knees with your two hands. If that doesn't feel tight enough for you, you could wrap your elbows around your knees, and that's a deeper squeeze of those legs, those knees into your rib cage. And you can just do a really gentle little rock across your spine. You don't have to go very far. And of course, you know, if you've got a, a hardwood floor or what you're laying on isn't super cushiony right now, then it might be uncomfortable for your backbone. So just make sure that any movement that you're making right now feels okay. And then we'll simply just let the knees fall over to the left. And if you happen to have a pillow there, you could even put a pillow underneath your bottom knee and raise the floor up to meet your legs. Maybe, maybe not. It kind of depends on how it feels in your body. And we'll see if you can keep your shoulders close to the ground and just open up your whole chest to the sky. You can take your arms out wide, think like a pair of bird wings, or you could make your arms into more of a cactus shape. So see what's comfortable. And just take a few breaths. Again, you could use that samavriti, that even breath in and even breath out. And to see how it feels to rest your upper back into the ground and to expand in your rib cage. All those little muscles in your ribs, those intercostal muscles are spreading out. So as you breathe, we're creating more and more space for the lungs to expand in the capacity of your rib cage. It might make you want to cough. So if that happens, that's good. That's clearing out those dust bunnies. So you can cough, you can sigh. Sometimes I'm in a twist and I just feel like I want to take a big breath in and just ah. Even that can help us to release stress and tension. Go ahead and bring your knees back up to the middle. You were on that side for about a minute. And go ahead and bring them over to the other side. And again, if you had a pillow under the first side and you want to use that here, you can do the same. But we'll just let those shoulder blades kind of fall into the ground. Just let gravity take your back, your upper body. Notice how it feels. You could be experiencing just a really nice stretch here. But play with your breath for a moment. Just take a nice full breath in. And if you want to let it out with a sigh, you could do that. Or you could do that four counts in and four counts out. See how it feels. Maybe closing the eyes and letting things just kind of shut down and slow down a little bit. Maybe take like two or three more breaths here just to make it even to the first side. And then when you finish that second or third breath, go ahead and come back to the middle. And let's just stay here for a moment. And we'll do one more pose because it's so easy to add on right here. Is just to take your feet up into the air. Your knees can be bent or straight. They can be pretty relaxed actually. And it can be just your legs up there. Or if you want, you can also take your arms up. So this pose has a lot of different names. Um, from the Sanskrit, which is Viparita Karani, waterfall pose. And we just kind of call it legs up the wall because it's easy. But sometimes, you know, when I put the arms up in it, I call it upside down jellyfish or whatever you think. Some people call it dead bug pose. And basically what's happening here is we're allowing the lymphatic system to have a little drain. So your feet are often... You know, if, if you're sitting a lot or you're standing a lot, you work, you know, maybe you're not really exercising a lot with your legs, then energy can build up in your feet as well. So we want to drain that out. So taking the feet up and the hands up just allows those tissues a little wash out and everything kind of comes back into the center of your body and the lymphatic system takes care of that. And then slowly you can just let your feet come back down. That was about a minute. Let your hands come down and just rest them on your chest or your belly for a second. Take a few breaths. Notice the movement of your breath in and out. 
And maybe even invite a sigh out on your exhalation. Maybe try that with me, a breath in. And then sigh it out. <sighs> that felt good, so let's do one more. Breathing in. And just sighing out. <sighs> and return to your natural breath or that even breath. And in your own time, you can go ahead and curl to your side and press yourself back up to your seat. And if you really feel comfortable and you want to stay there, then by all means, you can stay there. So there's one other type of posture that's really, really great for your immune system. And I'll just show that to you. And then you could maybe recreate this for yourself later, unless you want to try it with me. There are lots of ways to do chest openers. You could simply sit in a chair and, you know, take your arms behind you, interlace your fingers and open up your chest. That's probably the easiest way to do a chest opener and not need any props. And if your hands don't quite reach behind your back, you could reach onto your sitting cushion or maybe opposite elbows. But this opens up the chest and gives us even a little bit more expansion than what we just did on the floor with our spinal twist. But there are a couple of really fun ones that you can do at home. And again, you can just watch right now and I'll demonstrate. And you may not have yoga props like these, but if you do, or maybe you can get creative, you could build a little ramp and very simply lay your back on this ramp. So you're on an incline, which is actually a great way of sleeping if you do have congestion or you do find that you have a cold is to elevate your chest a little bit. So in this position, I'm able to open up my chest quite a lot. You don't need the blocks. You could just take any old couch cushion or pillow that's sturdy and not lift it up on props at all and just be in a, a pose like this with a simple bolster, you know? So you can get creative. You don't have to have all these special props, but anything like that, heart opening poses um, are really wonderful ways to open the chest. They help you to promote deeper breathing, to free up your lungs, to relieve congestion, and ultimately all of that helps us to improve our circulation, which picks up all the stuff that we don't want in our body and clear out the things that might be stagnant, stale, or causing disease. So I will send all of these um, little visuals to Amy so that you can see them later. And I can see that you guys are all in a variety of postures. I love it. So it's great to see you in there and staying. But if anyone has a question, I would love to chat with you. So feel free to unmute if there's something specific that you are curious about or want to know a little more about some of the things that I shared. No questions? A-okay? Do you feel like you're, you'd be able to take that Samavriti breath with you? And it's pretty easy, right? All you have to do is breathe in for three or four and breathe out for three or four. And some of you might know other breathing practices too. I've got lots and I'll share one other one with Amy that we didn't practice tonight, but I'll give it to you anyway so that you can look at that later. And it's a pretty easy one to learn. Katie, um, Peggy asks uh, two different things. How do you really keep yourself going? And then um, what are, oops, it just disappeared on me. Um, what kinds of cues do you neophytes suggest? How do we get going every day? You know, well, it's kind of interesting that you asked that because there's a, a quote that I love and it's, when you practice yoga once a week, you change your mind. When you practice yoga twice a week, you change your body. And when you practice yoga every day, you change your life. Now, yoga isn't just postures, right? The breath that we just did is one of the eight limbs of yoga. So even if you just sat every day for five minutes and did a breathing practice or knew how to do that breath when you got stressed out or anxious or when you know you want to boost your immune system, you are practicing yoga. It's just one of eight limbs. So, you know, can you fit in, you know, a five-minute practice a couple of days a week? 
you know, or do a pose that's a restorative pose like one of these, you know, maybe every day before you get out of bed. Does anybody do a twist like that before you get out of bed? It's a great thing to do. Before you even put your feet on the ground, you hug your knees in, do a little twist, you tone up your spine, you open up your lungs, you take a big breath. You don't have to roll out a yoga mat. You can do these things anywhere. You know, you could be sitting in a chair in your kitchen and take a spinal twist, right? So we do that all the time. So that's how I get it in every day is just, you know, sometimes we're just doing it and we don't even know we're doing it. But if we do it with intention, then it has that much more benefit. That's great. Anyone else have any questions for Katie? Does yeah. it matter if we breathe through the nose or the mouth? Yeah, um, it's actually, you know, breathing either way, as long as you're breathing and really putting some attention on it is great. But that's an awesome question, Linda. Breathing in and out through the nostrils is actually better if you're not congested. And there's a, a much longer conversation around that, but I'll give you the quick answer, okay? So the two channels of your nostrils, the left side is Ida Nadi. So there's actually an energy channel on the left and the right side is Pingala Nadi. Well, the left side is the lunar feminine passive side <clears throat> of your the nasal passages and the right is the more solar active you know yang side and so when we breathe in and out through the nostrils we actually help to balance the breath that was the other breath that i was going to do with you tonight it's called nadi shodhana it's balancing the left and the right so if we can breathe in through the nadis through the nostrils we actually do a better job of balancing our physiology and our mind versus breathing in and out through the mouth, because these are the channels right here versus the one portal, you know? So that's a great question, but if you're congested or you're stuffed up in your nose, then as long as you're able to breathe, you know? It's such a great design, right? If our noses get clogged up that we can actually breathe out and breathe in and out through our mouths. Thank goodness. Anybody else have a question? I would love for anyone who, you know, later on you're like, oh, I wish I'd asked that. Feel free to email me. I love to talk about yoga. My, uh, I'll give my email to Amy and I'm happy for you to give that out. Um, my website, dragonflyyogabarn.com has a lot of information on there. So you can kind of surf around and maybe find some things that are interesting to you. Um, I've got classes that happen weekly and some of them are very gentle. And actually there's a lot of pranayama, a lot of breathing and a lot of gentle yoga. There's a restorative yoga um, series coming up that starts next week, and all of the poses are like laying around on bolsters and cushions and pillows, which is very, very good for your parasympathetic nervous system. So if you're digging this, this conversation and want a little bit more, then I would suggest that class because it's it's would totally be up the alley of this conversation right now. So it's a good one. Anyone else? Thank you, Katie. We don't want to stop, do we? <laughs> we just want to do this for a couple hours, I think. Here. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for spending time with us tonight. You're we so thank welcome. you for showing up and check out Katie's website and the Yoga Barn pictures if you haven't been there. Even if you can't go in person, are you having people in person yet? Right now, um, almost exclusively on Zoom. All of my classes, I teach every single day of the week. Um, and Lisa Burke, who is a dear friend of mine, teaches on Tuesdays. Um, so I'm teaching every day on Zoom and I have just a couple of students who don't have access to that at home and, and they come to the studio, but it's literally like three people <laughs> and, and a huge space like this. Um, but I'm hoping- This is something okay. I would imagine kind of translates pretty well to Zoom too. It does. I think, you know, and Linda, you're a regular, you know, um, in my classes. So Linda knows um, I do my best for it to feel like a community and to bring people in and ask questions if they want to. And it's very exper experiential and, you know, we play. Um, it's different every time and it's just a lot of fun. So I thank you so much for including me in this um, community. I feel like Tamworth and Sandwich are, are like siblings to each other, you know? So it's really fun to be a part of this kind of double crew. And I, a lot of my students are from Tamworth and Wanna Lancet and Chikora. And 
Uh, so it's really lovely to see your faces and to share this with you tonight. Well, thanks. And this is, is being recorded, so it'll be up online if you want to share it with any of your friends. Um, there'll be a posting about it, but you can always go to the Tamworth website, the library website. So awesome. thanks, Katie. Hey, yes, you're welcome. Thank you. Namaste, all. Have a, an awesome, beautiful night. Thank you.